out here? Come here. Where are you going? Hello everyone, it is Shipwreck Samantha here, and today I'm going to be sharing five art hacks that I think every artist should know. These hacks are a bit drawing oriented. I am not a painter, I am mostly an illustrator and concept artist, and so a lot of my medium involves pencils and color pencils and digital art, and so that's what this art hack video is going to be revolved around. So without further ado, I'm going to go straight into my five favorite art hacks. One of the favorite things I like to do is hand shave my pencils instead of using a regular pencil sharpener. I do know there are a few professional artist uh, pencil sharpeners out there, but I've never tried them. I've always found one of my favorite things to do is just shave them by hand. I've always gotten frustrated using pencils, regular pencil shavers, because you don't quite get the tip you want. I would try to tilt the pencil in different ways to get the angle and the sharpness that I wanted, but it just never really worked. And it usually broke the pencil lead if I was using a softer pencil. And so it got very frustrating very quickly, even though I've used that method for years. And and so finding this way to do it by hand has made it so much easier. So I will say this is only a tip for adults because I don't want to encourage kids to be using sharp objects to be cutting themselves with. And so I will say be very responsible when doing this if you even do it at all. I've never cut myself because I'm very experienced with it. So be very, very careful when doing this. My next tip is kneading dough erasers. Um, a lot of people seem to not quite understand what these are, and I don't know exactly what they're made of, but kneading dough erasers are sort of a dough-like eraser. And so they're usually gray and kind of like a paste or a dough, and you can stretch and mold and bend them how you want. And some of the benefits of this is, as compared to a regular eraser that leaves behind little bits of... Uh, eraser residue little pieces that kind of fall off as you rub the eraser. With an eating dough eraser it just lifts the graphite instead of rubbing it away and so it leaves smudging on your paper it prevents that and also because you can knead and shape the eraser you can shape it to the exact point that you want for really fine details as well. And I've even used a method of just dabbing the eraser on the paper to lift that graphite up instead of rubbing it across large areas. And so it's really awesome for erasing small areas, but it's also great for drawing on the go because it's really can cause a mess if you use a regular eraser that leaves behind all those little bits and pieces of eraser everywhere. It can make a mess and it's really a pain. And so these kneading dough erasers don't do that. And once you start to get graphite on them, you just bend and mix it back into itself and it's good as new again. My next tip is having a case to hold your pencil shavings. Now, whether you shave your pencils by hand or you use a pencil sharpener, when you're out and about, it can be difficult shaving your pencils because you have all the pencil shavings that are left behind. And so something I've discovered is I have a hard little pencil case that I use just to keep my pencil shavings in. I used to just allow the pencil shavings to fall right into my pencil bag with my kneading dough erasers and the graphite from those shavings got on the kneading dough erasers and made them harden and last a lot less. They didn't last nearly as long because of that. And so in order to keep the pencil shavings from just being littered everywhere I go and keeping them from getting on my erasers, I just decided I would put it contained in a pencil case because my erasers are now just completely covered in graphite because I used to just dump it in there with my pencils. Tip number four is a method for blending Prismacolor pencils. A lot of people have a, a lot of different methods for blending Prismacolors, but this is actually a method I've discovered myself because this is a non-toxic method for blending Prismacolors. There are people that have suggested things that are some sort of like rubbing alcohol or things to use to blend Prismacolors because they're very waxy. But, as a lot of you guys know, I own a bird. So it's actually a lot bigger of an issue for me than other people to have an art medium that has a toxic fume to it. Because any toxic fume can hurt my bird. So I have to be very careful what kind of art supplies I use. And so what I use to blend my Prismacolors is olive oil. I found dipping a blending stump in some olive oil is a great way to blend Prismacolors without having to use anything toxic. By the way, 
This is Rose, my green cheek conure, for those of you guys who haven't been introduced yet. She really loves being on camera, and so I thought I'll start bringing her back into these videos again like I used to. Really? You're making me look like a liar. Come out here on camera, come here. Rose. Hey. Rose. Really? My last tip is showing you the difference between an H and a B pencil. There is a large spectrum of different pencils out there and it can be very confusing which one you should use. And for a long time I didn't even know the difference so I just grabbed a pencil and started using it. But there's a lot of benefits to understanding the difference. H pencils as an H, 2H, 3H and going on are hard lead pencils. And so because of the harder lead they don't come on the paper as much and they come onto the paper much lighter and so no matter how hard you press with an H pencil you're not going to get very dark and the higher the number the lighter it is. Here's the difference between an H pencil and a 4H pencil and you can see the farther the higher the number the lighter the pencil. As for B pencils, B are a softer lead pencil and so the rules of the H pencils are the opposite on the B's. So a B pencil would be the lightest and an 8B pencil would be the darkest. So the higher the number you go on a B pencil, the darker the lead. Because it's softer, it allows you to put more lead onto the paper and can make much darker lines. These pencils are great for doing a lot of shading compared to H pencils being good for sketching out ideas. Well, that's it for my art hacks. I hope you guys like this video. Comment down below and tell me any art hacks that you use on a regular basis or any that you know of that could be helpful to other artists. I'm sure anyone down in the comments would appreciate what you have to say and appreciate your tips on helping all of us figure out better ways to draw and kind of shortcuts to being an artist. I would really love to hear your thoughts, so be sure to comment all those thoughts down below. If you're new around here, I create new art videos every single Friday and Sunday. Friday, I do art discussions like this one. I also do art challenges and speed paints and on Sundays is sketchbook Sundays where I review my drawings from the week and show you guys how I've been learning and improving so we can all learn and improve together. So if you want to learn to be a better artist and learn and grow be sure to subscribe by hitting somewhere on the screen or click down below and so that is all I have for you guys today so I will see you guys Sunday.